and the guy was like, did not find the humor, did not know how to take it, thought it was kind of like a dick dick. Hi guys, this is Ro. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a fun slash funny I guess, video for you guys. It is in response to one of you who commented on one of my videos about, it was how to spice up your jail mail and letters and things that you can send in. And she said, sending jokes is also a good idea, something that she does. She said, laughter is the best medicine. And I love that. And it reminded me of a time that I sent Adam an image. And I did it in a joking manner, but the guys inside did not think it was really funny. So we're gonna do a little bit of a story time and then we're gonna turn this into a little bit of a prison wife lesson. So can you guess who the picture was of that I recreated and sent to Adam? Do you guys want another clue? No? I recognize that I don't look exactly like she looks. I'm doing kind of an inspired look of Rosie the Riveter, but you know, that's okay. It's 90 degrees in this bedroom and I just could not imagine putting on a button down long sleeve chambray shirt. So we're going with, I guess a Daisy Duck, Rosie the Riveter inspired combo fusion thing. Anyway, so back when I first started Strong Prison Wives, all over the Prison Wife pages, there were a lot of fun challenges and things that, we, that went on. We shared a lot about things that we could do to send inside versus like now there's still some of that, but it's a lot more questions and answers and policy and procedure. And I love, love, love that because we help each other. But also it's kind of fun to bring this stuff back. So hopefully this video helps inspire you. And the other video that I did about um, helping them to not become institutionalized and stuff that you can send inside. I will post that up there as well. So I'm going to pop the picture in that inspired this video that I'm talking about. And one day I just had this idea dawn on me. We're talking all about strong prison wives and our strength and all of the tenacity, determination, and all of those really strong words that it takes to get through the prison wife journey. And who is the woman icon of strength? In my opinion, it is that old war picture of Rosie the Riveter. So am I saying it right? Riveter, Riveteer? I'm not sure how to say it. But I will pop the original picture in there that I recreated. And then again, I will pop the picture of me in there. And in there, I wrote on the photo, I wrote, I believe he was 12 years in at that point, 12 years down, 201 years to go. Because for you guys that are new here, first of all, make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video. But second of all, Adam, my husband is serving a 213 year sentence in federal prison due to mandatory minimum sentencing laws. Even though nobody was physically injured in the commission of his crimes, they stacked the charges on top of one another and it created this crazy longer than life sentence that we're trying to get overturned. So in my opinion, you have a choice. You could either get bitter and blame the system and just live in a depressed state all the time and you have every right, you meeting me, I guess, have every right to do that or you can kind of pull up your big girl panties and you can slap a smile on your face and you can choose to find the silver lining in anything around us and you can choose to laugh, to learn how to laugh again, to find that laugh because it takes a long time for those of us or for those of you who have been, uh, had your loved one ripped away from you and you're in this horrible situation where you're trying to learn how to cope and deal with either grieving the loss of him if you knew him before or grieving the life that you want if you knew, met him after he was already incarcerated or rekindled your relationship after he was already incarcerated. So my thought was, let's laugh about it. So it says across the front of me with my Ro Rosie the Riveter pose, it said 12 years down, 200 more to go. And then at the bottom it said, strong enough to wait forever. And that was me like depicting the, epitome, depicting the epitome of strength. So Adam got it, he loved it. He laughed hysterical, thought it was funny, thought it was adorable. And he was using it as a bookmark in one of his books. And one day he was out in the yard, it was the summer, he was reading and one of his friends walks by and they started talking and either the guy saw the photo or Adam showed it to them laughing. And the guy was like, did not find the humor, did not know how to take it, thought it was kind of like sadistic. Is that the word? You know, when you're like 
too much of, maybe that's the wrong word, but thought it was like too much self deprecating that it wasn't funny or like I lost my mind, he lost his mind together. We're just cuckoo birds. Isn't far from the truth, but of course, we're not living in denial. We know the reality of the sentence, but why are we gonna live with that depression and thinking about that and putting that energy out there all day, every day when we can make the best of it, right? So he's like, I don't know, that guy was weird. I just went off and did my own thing. And then he showed it to another guy who had the exact same reaction. And then another guy, and then another guy, and then a group of guys, and they all had the same reaction. He said, nobody knew how to take it. And every time he laughed, everyone would make a face like, Austin lost his mind and they would like run away. Because I guess if you put, yourself in the other person's shoes so in a guy that's inside shoes who has an outdate putting himself in adam's shoes then they can't fathom having to serve this crazy longer than life sentence especially when the crime and the punishment don't fit so they all say like i wouldn't be able to do it i would do this i would do that i would do the other thing and Adam's like, right, that's what you say until you're faced with that situation. Same with us, like I would walk away, I would do this, I would do that, until you're faced with the situation. And that's why we don't judge one another, but I'm going way tangent. But here's the thing, if you lose your sense of humor, really what else do you have? You have to hold on to that. You have to learn how to laugh at things, otherwise you're really gonna get bitter and you're going to let everybody else and the system win. So just remember, there's a difference between making fun of something and making light of a situation that you have no control over. And that's what I felt that this Rosie the Riveter picture did. It showed my strength. It just showed like, I'll wait forever. If you choose to get bitter and not learn how to find a silver lining and even laugh at this, you're going to let them win. You're gonna let them come between you and that is exactly what this awful criminal justice system in the United States is set up to do. However, if you learn to band together and work together and stay lighthearted and find the humor and find how you're gonna just survive all of this, at the end of the day, you're winning, not them. Obviously, there is a time and a place for everything. So you don't want to be sitting in his sentencing laughing, right, when he gets sentenced. But you do have to find the humor in things when it's appropriate. And this way, you'll be able to find some sort of semblance of sanity during this whole entire horrific process. So I'm gonna read this part to you because laughter is so healthy for you. It decreases stress hormones and increases immune cells and infection fighting antibodies, thus improving your resistance to disease. Laughter triggers the release of endorphins, the body's natural feel good chemicals. Endorphins promote an all over sense of well being and even temporarily relieve pain. I actually learned something very similar in the movie, The Secret. One of the people who was contributing said that they found a study where cancer patients would watch either funny like cartoons or comedy, some sort of movie, some sort of comedian every single night and they would just laugh and they wouldn't focus on their disease and the desperation and the despair. And then another group wouldn't do anything funny. They would just go through the everyday life kind of stuck in their disease and etc. And the group of people who they found the humor and everything were the ones that went into remission faster. They're the ones that survived longer because their body healed itself when they were in a state of joy and laughing. Okay, commercial break. I completely forgot to put on my lights behind me and I wanted them on so badly that I stopped the video, put them on. So half of it's gonna be with them on and half of it's gonna be with them off, but I really like them behind me. So anyway, I found this crazy video, right? And I used to do one really long video for a premium membership just once a month and I wasn't doing YouTube videos all the time. So they were my monthly newsletters and I would have this little structure. They would last like 45 minutes or an hour. They were just way too long. But I had a structure to them where I would talk about um, the volunteer of the month and then talk about, I would answer a question of the month and then I would give you a challenge of the month. I would give you a quote of the month. And in this one video, I guess I was grasping. I found this challenge of the month that was all about laughter yoga. And what laughter yoga is, it makes me laugh so hard. If I can find videos of it, I'll insert it here. <laughs> 
What is laughter yoga? Laughter yoga is a unique concept where anyone can laugh for exercise or social connection without the use of humor, jokes, or comedy. We call it laughter yoga because we combine laughter exercises with yogic breathing, pranayama, which allows us to bring much more oxygen into the body and brain, making us feel healthier and much more energetic. <laughs> They say that you can't tell or your body in its reaction can't tell the difference between a real laugh and a fake laugh. So it, they sit a whole bunch of people in like a yoga studio, right? And the instructor will sit there. This is so embarrassing for me to even try to show you. And they'll just go, ha, 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 ha. And they'll just laugh like that, ha. Ha, ha, until people really genuinely start laughing because it's crazy. And then you eventually break out and the whole room erupts into laughter. And they say it's this amazing, rejuvenating, you feel rested, you feel relaxed, you feel amazing because the endorphins are released after this class. Personally, I think it's a little kooky, but I like the concept behind it. Eventually, it's so ridiculous that you start laughing. Sorry guys, my battery died, so I'm over two today, obviously. First, I forgot the lights behind me, and then second, my battery dies in the middle of a video. But anyway, the point in telling you the um, laughter yoga example is not to get you to do laughter yoga, because I think it's kind of a little quirky myself, but it's to it challenge you to try to find something First of all, to make you laugh every single day, whether that be playing with a baby or a puppy or watching something funny on TV or listening to, I love the comedy channels on XM radio. There's a Kevin Hart one. There's just a Comedy Central one. Sometimes when I'm driving out to visit, I'll just listen to that for six hours and laugh. And then the other challenge is for you to find something funny and send it to your loved ones. Find something that you think is funny between you guys. Not only because it'll make them laugh, but it also helps him understand that you're doing okay out here. You're surviving. You got this. You're not crying and trying to keep your head under the covers every day. He's not worried like I have to break up with her because she is a hot mess and I feel guilty. You got this. You're doing this. You're strong. You're laughing. You're moving with life. You're keeping it moving. And that's not to say you don't tell him when you're having emotionally bad days because we've I've talked about that on millions of other videos. I've cried here on camera for 30 minutes straight videos. But the point is if you can learn how to have more good days than bad, you're succeeding and you're doing okay. And a way to do that is to be able to laugh. I love you guys so much. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being over. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys.